All right, guys, we're doing something a little bit different here today. Big Ben Interactive, the creators of Warhammer Chaos Bane, approached me and asked if I'd like to do a sponsored video for the new Warhammer Chaos Bane DLC, The Tomb Kings. It just comes out today, December 16th. And me, being a massive fan of uh, Warhammer and ARPGs, I absolutely said yes. So if you are interested in this DLC, you can find a link for it in the description that you can purchase it through. Um, but right now what I'm going to do is just real quick go through the four classes that the game uh, features. They didn't ask me to go through this much detail, but I feel like it's pretty necessary just to give you a really good idea of how Chaos Bane works. It's a very different ARPG. Um, once we kind of go through that on a very high level, it's going to be like five, six, maybe even ten minutes. <laughs> We're then going to jump to some gameplay with Loremaster of Sotek and myself. Uh, we'll be collaborating on this video, and he will also have a video on his channel. Um, won't be the same one as this, but if you want to see like a continuation, more or less, of what we do, jump over to his channel. You can see the rest of that playthrough. But uh, we've got four main classes here. And to give you an idea of when this game is set, it's set right after the Great Chaos War, or Ch Great Chaos in, uh, Incursion, prior to Archaeon the Ever Chosen's massive chaos uh, invasion. This is after Asavar Kul attacks down into Kislev. You have Magnus the Pious, who has moved the capital of the Empire from Altdorf to Null. And at this time, you have the great colleges of magic that are being built in the Empire, and you have Teclas teaching humans how to use magic. So this is a very interesting time in not just Warhammer lore, but especially the Empire lore. You get a lot of intersection from a lot of different races. Uh, the Dark Elves attacked into Ulthwan, and you have a lot of intersection from the Dwarfs and the Wood Elves into the Empire. So it's a pretty tumultuous time, not unlike the end times that really occurs towards the end of 8th edition. So right now we've got Volan, who is our Empire Soldier. Now you can kind of look at these guys archetypically, right? Uh, this guy looks at like your frontline tank. Like, look at the dude. He's <laughs> he's got a sword. He's got a shield. His helmet. You can barely see his eyes. But the one thing I really like about Chaos Bane is that you don't need to play each one of these classes like a typical archetype. They each have a DPS role. They each have a tanking role, and they each have a support role. So you can play them really however you want. Now the next one here is uh, Braggy. Now he is going to be your Dwarf Slayer. Definitely a melee brawler. And he looks badass. Like look at him. He's just covered in runes. I really love the aesthetic of this dude. Uh, because I mean Dwarf Slayers are one of my favorite dwarf characters period. And I really love the aesthetic of these guys. These are obviously all maxed out to level 50. So you can see what they look like on the, the top end. But I mean you can still look cool at level 2. I mean it's a pretty good progression. Then we have Elon Tyr, who is obviously my favorite character. Um, it's going to be a high elf mage, high elf caster, uh, arc mage, whatever you want to call it. Now, typically you look at this as a backline caster, but you can play this character very tanky. And we'll jump into him because he's going to be the one I'll be playing with, uh, Lore Master of Sotek. Um, and then also we get Elsa. Now, Elsa is a Wood Elf Way Watcher and really more of a backline um, kind of DPS character and uh, the pet class of the game. Now, when you play through um, this game, you'll see that it also is very geared towards customization. It's not so set in stone. You don't just kind of choose like, hey, okay, if you're going to play this character, these are the things you're going to get. No, you have a very interesting way of kind of going about your skills. You basically have these total amount of skill points that you gain as you level up. And then you socket more or less your skills across. You can see this little uh, wind, not windmill, but this little dial here. You have your left and right click, one, two, three, and four. And then you've got these three abilities, which are pa passive, and these three abilities, which are passive. And you can socket in your god skills, uh, which kind of give you a little bit of spice based off of how you want to kind of specialize your character. Uh, you see I've got these, these uh, separate builds up here. Each one's going to change my skills and my loadout. Each one of these has got a different role, like these two are DPS focused, like my character is going to do a lot of slashing damage or he's going to use these dragon breath attacks that really co coincide with the skills that he gets or the bonuses he gets from his set items. This is dip very typical kind of ARPG style, right? Where you've got set items, you've got varying tiers, like take a look at this little bad boy, it's heroic, so you have a lot of very different, uh, huge variety in the way you want to do your character. Like, if I jump onto this dude, he's going to be way more tanky, and he's used, he, he's geared more towards making things like kind of stuck in place, immovable, so my other characters or other people in my party can jump on and attack. The nice thing about this game is I can play this game solo, on just like 
uh, uh, local, not not on the internet, or I can play online co-op with, say, SoTech or other people in a matchmaking type scenario. So you don't need to play online, which is kind of nice. A lot of ARPGs kind of force you online, which is um, kind of poopy. But I also have this character, which is more support. I can buff up my uh, players, the players around me. You have healing from some of your passives. If they're around you, they get a uh, passive regen. Like, let me take a look at this. Um, one of these is it. Ah, here it is. <laughs> using a skill to cooldown has a chance to heal all players. So pretty much using your god skills, anything like this, like, okay, that's got a cooldown, that's going to heal players. This has got a cooldown, it's going to heal players. That's going to heal players. So there's a lot of really cool diversity in Chaos Bane because you're not so fo focused on playing um, strictly a frontline tank like the Empire Soldier. The Empire Soldier can play range with a kind of like a pistolier style uh, for however you want to go with your character. So I think that's a lot of fun. Let's jump on over to the uh, gameplay and let's have a lot of fun with Sotek. I'm sure we're going to talk about way too much lore and just get engrossed in this game like we always do. All right, guys, so we're now in the game here. It looks like Loremaster of Sotek won't be joining us here today. So we're going to have some fun on our Dragon Tamer themed uh, Elon tier. Now, this means that we'll be using an alternation between both fire abilities and arcane abilities to get some really cool effects. So if I use just this, you can see, oh, it's going down. I'm dropping them, uh, dropping the bows on them. Use right click and it'll just shoot some magic missiles. Now, if I alternate between these abilities, you can see that these little things are starting to come out for me and those will do damage to enemies. So it's really all about kind of alternating that damage back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now, I've got, already gone a little ways through the campaign, just a little bit, just to kind of get a feel for how the game plays, how um, this character kind of plays. So, we're going off to the desert. See this? these abilities that kind of trigger as I just kind of slay through things, which is pretty sweet. Right now, we're just kind of fighting through some some uh, uh, Tomb Kings, just some skeleton warriors here, nothing fancy, no Tomb Guard, um, no Ushabti. We, we've, I've already seen some of them, and they're pretty beastly. They're uh, kind of like little mini-bosses, elite units in the game that you kind of have to fight through. Kind of zapping through these dudes, though. And this is a, a DPS kind of centric build. I do have a build that is a little bit more tanky, a one that is a little bit more support oriented. So I can kind of pop into those at will with these uh, four buttons up here, which is really cool. Then on top of it, well, let me make sure I don't have... Oh, Tomb Scorpion just kind of attacking me here. Arabs. Now, on top of it, I also have the ability of this nice god tree. Now, if you're familiar with games like Path of Exile, Grim Dawn, your typical kind of ARPG, you can kind of scrub through this to get a sense for what you want to, or how you really want to customize your character. And this will really kind of depend upon the build you're playing across all of your skill points, um, your individual items here, like taking a look at this, we have the Focusing Crystal, um, or wait, wait, yeah, haha. So we have the Dragon Tamer armor set. So casting a fire spell unleashes a magic projectile and vice versa with a magic spell. The arcane binding passive skill is improved and no longer requires skill points to equip. If I take a look over here to my skills, remember all these do, uh, these little numbers here correspond to the total amount of skill points it costs to equip them. We have 100 skill points, but we move this over here, get the arcane binding ability, if I bind it properly. I don't have it already equipped. No, I do not. The cool thing here is, like, again, you, you pop these into place, and these different winds, right? So, Akshi, fire damage, uh, Quiash, which is your magic damage, and all these are going to do, they're going to help you out with whatever your build is kind of uh, focused around. So, Arcane Binding, dealing magical damage increases fire spell damage and reduces its energy cost, and vice versa. So, boop, we're going to pop that on, and we see it costs us zero skill points. So, it's a great way to get a skill on here and have it not contribute to this total 100 max. Um, you also have fan skills, which are pretty cool. Um, I have a little cool Frostfire Phoenix. It increases my, loo my looting radius. I can also put a Flame Spire Phoenix on here if I want. I've got different um, emotes I can drop on, so it's kind of... It's funny because it gives you a little fan service, little special abilities, like here's a cool little headgear that I get for the Magnus Edition. Something a little bit more along the lines of like a Lothern head guard or um, headpiece you'd see on maybe a archer. But also to kind of go through the aesthetic here. So we have a kind of a Caledorian themed uh, suit right now, right? This is more of your Hoeth kind of theme here. I suppose this would be with the Loremaster. Now look at that one. That was pretty awesome, right? 
We jump over here to Trace, and I love this one, Defender of Ulthuan. And that's what the White Lines of Trace are. They owe those personal bodyguards to the Phoenix King. So you get a lot of really cool aesthetic in a lot of these different um, armor pierces, right? Like Kalidor Loremaster's Spalders. So all of these things kind of correspond to certain suits. And you can see on here, Kalidor Loremaster set, 0, 5, increases my damage by 5%. Um, and your typical kind of um, coloration when it comes to the increasing... Um, uniqueness or rareness of individual items like here's the rift eater here and this is a unique ability or heroic actually is what it's called in this game and this has a lot of special abilities armor piercing cooldown critical damage damage and uh, max health you can see how it compares to my green one the blade of instability which is a set item and from there you can bless items and you use all these fragments that you find out in the world here, let me uh let me sock it in something real quick drop this in look i can drop this in here Oh, and that's going to increase my critical damage. But I can do more. I can do more. I can do... Oh, I thought I could do that. Nah, I can't. <laughs> but then I can... So I get a lot more crit damage. But then I can do this and keep stacking that up. Or I can drop this in here. Then I do that to kind of complete it all to increase the magnitude of all of it. So you do have a lot of really cool ways you can um, really customize what you're doing. And I like that a lot about this game. And you get that in a lot of ARPGs. But I think that Chaos Bane does it in a really cool way because it allows you to really focus on the really the ins and outs of your specific build, which I really enjoy. Oh, I'm not in the right build. Now I am. There we go. That was more of a support build, that, that Tracian one. The Defender of Ulthwan. Look at this really cool boom. Look at that big old flame wall ability. Come at me, Nehekara. Remember, I'm alternating my magic and my firing abilities. As things get close to me, they just get just singed up. And I have a really cool teleport spell that jumps me around. And you have different variations of these. Um, I can use a teleport spell that does damage when I when I move around. So you really play how you want, and you choose the skills that make sense for your, your build, for your individual set. Uh, a lot of factors at play here, and that's what I really like about this. Um, we'll do... You have all these different kind of uh, ways of going about these individual areas. Expedition, just go kind of kill through things. Invasion, I believe, is like a horde mode. And then boss rush, where you're just kind of going right for the boss. We'll do the main quest here. And, you, okay, you see the blood letter here? The really cool thing about the, the first portion of this game is it's very centered around the chaos gods. Uh, your very first boss is going to be a great unclean one. And now you, as you kind of deal with all these um, individual bosses and lords... Um, aligned to the individual Chaos Pantheon, you deal with corresponding bonuses to them. So, you know, Nurgle has a bunch of poison bonuses because, you know, Nurgle, you know, the great unclean one. Horn has a bunch of bonuses to each other's damage, so they buff each other up, they come in, they just mess up house. So they have a lot of really cool things, and you get a lot of really cool little mini-bosses like Chaverslites and Mutaliths, so you have a lot of really cool, I guess, units or or enemy variety in this game which is what i really like about it and with this being the newest dlc it, it feels very strong like they just had the 2.0 patch not too long ago and with that they made a lot of overhauls to the game a lot, a lot of uh, quality of life improvements so this kind of just kind of brings them home by adding in a whole new set of enemies with the tomb kings those little baby look at those little baby tomb scorpions I believe I have, yeah. So this is the rank 3 Phoenix Bulwark. You can see how this is just Step Between Worlds 1. And this is uh, Kiosh Surge Mastered. So as you choose 1, 2, or 3, which corresponds then to the higher point cost, you get a different ability. Like the, uh, this is a bigger, longer lasting um, firewall. Whereas prior, it wouldn't really be like that. And you also have these God Skills, which are these abilities right here. RK Manifestation. So if I... Uh, let me see done right over here and this as these kind of a, a crew you can kind of go into a super form and do a ton of damage we'll show you that in a bit once I get there oh oh that's not gonna be good Let's do this and alternate into this. Boom. Oh, yeah. Take that. 
I don't know about you guys, but I mean, ARPGs are one of my favorite genres. Like, I enjoy playing a lot of co-op stuff with friends, and ARPGs are obviously co-op games. Like I've said, you, this is single player right now, but I can play this online with Loremaster of Sotek, Jenna on occasion, Turn, whoever I want. But I also really enjoy the solo aspect of them. I mean, I love just burning through a bunch of dungeons over and over and over and over and over. Like, I mean, who wasn't raised in a in a baptism of fire playing like Diablo 2 and 1 when they were growing up? Or if you're younger, Diablo 3. That's your jam. But now, you don't need to play Diablo 3. You can just play Chaos Bane because you love Warhammer so much, just like I do. <laughs> Toasty Tomb Scorpions. Alright, so this little thing denotes that it is a boss over there. Well, not like a boss, like a little champion. Ooh, a little bulled up. We have some I'm gonna drop these generic items. You can tell they're generic, they're just a little uh, gray, not so important thing. Okay, we'll pick this up and that up. Knowledge is power. Use that ability, but hey, it works. I, I believe they resurrect Lich Priest right there that we just killed. Wading through these bone daddies over here, man. Now I know Turin, he was uh, playing through the game, he was playing with a uh, dwarf, and the dwarf is really cool too. Um, like I was saying earlier, you can play through all these different classes. The Wood Elf is definitely your more of your summoner type class. Um, summoner ranged, trap based, I guess that's kind of the thing, not to be confused with trap music. Um, your Empire Soldier can be, very, it's, it's me very melee centric, but you can also be kind of like a pistolier and do more of range damage. And then of course your Dwarf uh, kind of has that Slayer thing going. Elantir is really cool, and what I like about Elantir is, of course, he he is a high elf, so that's my favorite race right out the gate. Drop some. Just kind of free up some room here. We're probably going to take some damage. That's okay. That. Um, but it's cool to play from the perspective of, like, a, a lore... I'm sorry, a... Um, yeah, like a lore, lore master of Hoeth, like a like a, a mage from the Tower of Hoeth. Whereas, like previously, it's like you know, you think of high elves, you think of dragons, you think of Caladorians, you think of this, you know, a prince, someone riding through uh, town here, just crushing stuff. Um, another thing I like about this game a lot is the ability to f uh, filter, right? I can filter by what's new. I can filter by helmets. I can filter by chest pieces. So I can click these things on and off. Well, here's all my boots. Okay, that's what I meant to say. Here's all my helmets. Here's my new helmets. So I, I like that ability. I, I think that's a really strong thing is having that um, inventory management because we all know that the point of these games is to accrue the most, the largest inventory pros possible. Um, I would love to see though, like a dark elf in this game, and you really can't because, uh, because like I was saying, the, this game takes place during that after the Great War of Chaos. And the Dark Elves have just been beat off and re back from uh, Ulthwan. And with that, you have a, a pretty depleted race in, in the Dark Elves. They, they have lost in that grand fight. So you wouldn't see this them in this engagement at all, really. Um, definitely more focused towards the, the races of order. But it'd be cool to kind of get like a, like a mid-range to close-range hybrid caster melee lord character that was... I was focused on using dark magic, but also using like abilities and uh, like daggers or swords and stuff like that. I think it'd be pretty sick. Pop up in this bad boy. Get that agarized floor master. Amulets, whatever. Let's just grab some goods. Right, our last objective is down there, but you know, I just gotta complete this map. You can see, yeah, oh, we're almost fold up over here. Also known as filled up, which is the proper grammatical way to say that. I love, I love this. So there's, 
The other um, build on this, I'm not too crazy about. Um, we can't change it in this area. Uh, but the other one is more of like a fire-based build, which is cool, but it's a little less dynamic, I feel. It's not as fun as this one. Um, and that's, they, basically, uh, Big Band Interactive gave us uh, all these characters at max level so we could really try out this new content. And on top of it, they kind of said, hey, here's four builds that uh, have two DP they've got two DPS, one support, and one tank, and you can kind of choose. And <clears throat> that isn't to say that the class that they made that does uh, the fire builds is boring. It's just that I didn't, I don't really know how to like tweak it in the right way to make it really, 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 really good. But I like all the synergies of this and kind of alternating between fire and alternating between um, arcane to kind of get these big, huge blasts all over the place to do a ton of damage, just nuke things. This looks like the clearing for a boss. I'm not going to lie. Oh, get away from me, little disgusting beetles. Oh, it reminds me of the, of the mummy or, or was it Scorpion King or whatever? The, the beetles that just burrow into their, their faces and such. Actually, I think it's the third mummy. Little scarabs. What a lovely plinth you have here. We'll leave the desert. Get some goodies before. Oh, so we can see here. Um, that is a heroic item. Drop that, and we'll drop that. And we'll pick up the Defender Wolf one. We'll pick up that. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna investigate the rest of this place. I want to show. I want. I was looking for a boss to show you kind of the goods of the uh, the tilde button. See, all these things are filled up. And that means we're gonna just go into like a whole different mode, do a ton of damage. Be over here. Wade through these carrions. I've always loved like the aesthetic of like these big, huge, ornate shields for the Tomb Kings. Tomb Kings were one of those armies in, in tabletop that was just that is so understated. You, I never, I've never played against a Tomb King player when I was playing tabletop. I played against tons of vampire counts, tons of ogre kingdoms, dwarfs. I played definitely against um, Empire and Dark Elves. I was a high elf player. But I'd say that, I mean, Tomb Kings, I, I never really saw a whole ton of. And they had so many cool, like, beautiful centerpiece models, like um, Necro... Not Necrofax Colossus. <laughs> Necro Sphinx. Um, all these really, really, really... You know, War Sphinx. All these really cool, big constructs. So we beat this. Let's do a little boss rush real quick before we kind of close our video out here. We'll just go back to that area. Go back to that area. Rush through this, kill all these things. Actually, you know what? No, we'll, we'll go over here and turn our goodies. And I realize we don't—we have a. My magic is not ready yet. Okay, Elon Tear, you don't gotta yell at me. Very angry. Oh, quick trade. Common, uncommon, and rare. Gives us some reputation. Um, you can do other things with them, but I just wanted to free this up so we had uh, these things kind of showcased. The cool heroic items. We'll turn this in real quick, just, you know, for S's and G's. The the Get all those goodies. Ah! It's time. Marguerite is waiting for you at the tomb. Once you've arrived, oh. she oh, will... Oh, we're doing this. The, the inner crypt? You know that is going to have some goodies in it. Where are we going? Are we going up there? Reminds me of like that. Uh, you can unleash your character's bloodlust by pressing the tilde when the bloodlust gauge is full. Collect the red orbs that appear when enemies die to heal yourself and replenish the bloodlust gauge. That's the name of it, bloodlust. But the bloodlust is pretty powerful. That's what we're going to use it coming up here. But this, uh, any kind of desert aesthetic in an ARPG really reminds me of like Act 2 in Diablo, right? You get that really kind of cool um, undead uh, desert mechanic. Tons of just dried out skeletons. And that's like, that's Nehekara through and through, right? It's just these sandblasted, older than old skeleton warriors. And you think about the lore of Nehekara. This is 
a land that predates the empire. It was an empire before the empire. It was an empire, like, it, it kind of makes it seem like it was an empire right around the time of the end of the Great Catastrophe, uh, where the gods of Nehekara uh, were fighting against the, the Chaos Demons. And that's where the rise of the Priest Kings begins, and then it progresses into there, where eventually the Priest Kings are what become the Tomb Kings after um, Nagash causes all of the Priest Kings to come back to life. I'm ready to begin when you are. I am so ready, Marguerite. Are you certain this is wise? What do you mean? You do not understand the forces you are dealing with. Dua said so himself. Look at what Nehekara has become. Did the cult do this? Legends say that centuries ago, the high priest of the hey, look, mortuary cult, just what I was talking about. a Nehekaran of royal blood named Nagash, mastered the forces of life and death and became the first necromancer. Yeah, he basically learned necromancy from a captured dark elf sorcerer who taught him dark magic, or the magic of Dar. And he combined the mortuary cult's teachings of essentially kind of this, it, it's a very interesting form of magic because it's not like a true magic uh, when you think of like kind of manipulating the winds of magic. It's, it's, it's very ornate. It's kind of like rune and inscription and ritual based. And he combines this with Dar to create essentially necromancy, the beginning of necromancy. But instead of fulfilling his oaths to the Tomb Kings, Nagash used his powers only for himself. Among his many achievements was a potion known as the Elixir of Life, which granted him and his followers eternal vigor. The Elixir of Life goes on to create vampirism. Um, Ark in the Black, which, which is uh, Nagash's like prime follower, and Neferata take a book of Nagash to learn how to recreate the Elixir of Life, and Ark in the Black kind of manipulates it a little bit so it becomes a tainted elixir of life, thus creating vampirism. And vampirism initially could go out in the sun. They weren't afraid of the sun. It's Nagash is the one that kind of said, oh no, all vampires are damned now to Eventually, the sun. Eventually, the great cities of Nehekara rose in revolt, and the necromancer was overthrown. Consumed by vengeance, he began a great ritual that swept across the land, resurrecting the souls of the dead to serve him for all time. Even the great tomb kings were summoned from their crypts to bow before the usurper. Fortunately for the living world, Nagash was struck down before his ritual was complete. But Nehekara had been transformed forever into the haunted land you see today. So you really get a, a pretty cool um, kind of lore lesson with this game, which this is really is fun, the right? power you seek to understand. Can you not see the danger, human? Professor Dura knows more about the Tomb Kings than anyone else in the Old World. He is a gentle and kindly man, and much respected by the Amethyst Order. If he thinks there is good to be found here, then I believe him. I'm going to unseal the inner crypt. Get ready. Oh yeah, unseal it. Let's get a big boss fight going. quest I could do boss rush but I, I want to do the quest <laughs> I really dig I mean this is the first time you get any real kind of peer into these Tomb Kings tombs the closest thing you have to this is um, from Warhammer Age Reckoning so it's really cool to kind of see the aesthetic of these kind of being recreated across the way no game that no games workshop game is kind of free from the touch of Games Workshop, so you know this kind of has their full-on blessing of, yeah, mm -hmm, this is what it would, this is what it would look like. So it's always really kind of cool to see these games come to life, where you get that full-on, I guess, taste of uh, portions that the army books don't ever get a chance to go into because you know it's a grand tabletop-themed battle. Defeat the Guardian. Ah, it's reset our bloodlust. I forgot about that. That's okay. We'll build it up again, and I'll show you the red orbs that it, that it was talking about. Use that choke point to our advantage. Love the particle effects in the game too, like, um, like on all the weapons and everything like that. Like, 
mine are all like bursting with like arcane energy. This is these are the little things that increase your uh, bloodlust. That little floating red orb. Oh, and I missed it. Oh no, I grabbed it. I grabbed it. You can kind of. Oh, what I like too is you can press tab, just like you can for most of our RPGs. Put the little guy in the upper right corner. Kind of tuck it away, right? Don't mind Bailey. <clears throat> Wading through these dudes. So one thing I did want to talk about too, I forgot to bring up, is uh, you can see uh, we're on Chaos Difficulty 5. And this is very similar to what you get with like when you play Diablo 3 with the Torment difficulties. So essentially you've got like what? Easy, normal, hard, expert or whatever it is. Then Torment 1 through whatever. It's the same thing here. Easy, normal, hard, Chaos 1 through whatever. Uh, we can go to Chaos 10, I believe, is the max right now. Uh, so Chaos, or, uh, Chaos 5 is actually uh, decently difficult. So our character's pretty stacked, as you can see. This High Elf means business. There's a new law here in town. And it's a High Elf. That means Ponzi hairdresses for everybody. Oh, I'll put you done with the place. Remember those fragments you use to bless things, certain god tier skills will need them. I'm sorry, certain um, branches of your god skills will need it, or your god, uh, whatever this, what is this? Uh, god skill tree. Favor points as well to kind of push through other points, portions of it. Explode everywhere here, just get that in a Hekar and Priest. Oh, this looks ominous. Yeah, often you walk through the foyer of a uh, of a room, and you find yourself uh, with the coat room and the uh, guest bathroom filled, filled to the brim with bones. I've always loved like a uh, caster type characters in these games because they always can just teleport all over the place. Why walk when you can just teleport everywhere? New ARPG travel system. Like, look at the lighting effects on like all those uh, skelet all the skeletons and bones down there. How like kind of like pushes through them and whatnot as you like light stuff on fire. Like, I really like it's not just like a static ground. Like everything does have like little bits of ammuni or, uh, <laughs> ammunition animation attached to it or some sort of particle effect. It's just to kind of like make the uh, the world really kind of come alive. You can look at this uh, brazier over there, just kind of going wild. Just drop a little. A little arcane explosion everywhere too. My little minions, little things. The baby tomb scorpion coming at me again too. We should be getting. Oh, what is this? They'll go. Whoa. That's a mean guardian. Knowledge is power. Take that, guardian. No one wants you here anymore. You've done it. After so long, I confess I'd begun to have my doubts. But here we are. Nebmaket's crypt is ours. We'll begin cataloging the artifacts for removal at once. The first to go will be the books and scrolls. Lord Elantir, I am in your debt. You've done us a great service, and I will speak highly of you to Lord Finrir. 
My work here is not finished, Professor. I promised Lord Finrear that I would see you safely back to the Empire, and that is what I shall do. Eh? Hey? Mm. As you wish. Now, if you'll excuse us, there is a great deal of work to be done. Scary sight. So we are all done with this location. We'll take a look, see if there's any other goodies around here. Um, but we'll probably we'll be bringing this little video here to a close right now. So um, this is again the new DLC for Warhammer Chaos Bane. This is the Tomb the Tomb Kings DLC that came out on the 16th of December. So it is out as of the uh, publishing of this video. Uh, so if you do want to get embroiled in the game, I strongly recommend it. I think. Uh, right now it is on a flash sale on Steam, but if you are interested in the game, you can see a description or a link in the description below. Jump into that link and you can get a little bit more information uh, about the game as well as purchasing it and so on and so forth. Um, I didn't get a chance to show off the Bloodlust, so I'll do that right now real quick. We'll just boom, pop into it, and we just have these special abilities. He just shoots just all these just whirling blades of doom. Bloodlust Aetheric Blades. You can see they're, uh, they're like little uh, sword master's blades and such like that. I thought that that guardian was going to be a little more challenging. And I deliberately didn't choose the most challenging um, difficulty just because I wanted to be able to showcase the game. And have, not, have me not just like crying through everything. <laughs> but um, I really enjoy Chaos Bane. And that's why I agreed to do this. Um, I really enjoy RP ARPGs and I love the setting as a whole. So... Um, if you are into Warhammer and if you're into action RPGs, you just can't go wrong with um, with Chaos Band, in my opinion. So, um, as always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in here today. Uh, hopefully, you check out Chaos Band. Again, the link is in the description below. But um, if you get a chance and you want to uh, hit me up to play some games, let me know on either the Discord, message me on Steam, whatever works best for you. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.